ASMR video. Just kidding. It's a little bit of a bedtime politics slash Captain Marvel review. Well, it's more of a Captain Marvel review than and a little bit of bedtime politics in it. Welcome to part three of this thing. Um, anyways, yeah, so we saw Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel, as my dad likes to say. On, um, when did we watch it, Elaine? Friday? Friday. Watched it on Friday. And, um, initially I had kind of a few complaints about it, but, um, I decided to hold off on doing a review until I really had time to really think about it, you know. I slept on it and I thought about it some more. Um, so first things first, I'll get it out of the way. It was actually a pretty good movie. I keep shaking the thing, sorry. It was actually a pretty good movie. Um, I enjoyed it. You know, there's really kind of a lot to enjoy. Um, the action is, it's solid. You know, the characters, uh, some of them are pretty enjoyable. Um, but yeah, it's like, it's a solid Marvel movie, you know? It wasn't, it wasn't like there's was too much, uh, they didn't do anything really new with Marvel or whatever, you know? I'll start for the clickety-clackety, it's just Elaine doing her homework. Um... Anyways, they didn't try anything really that new, except for like, oh, girl, there you go, she's a girl. That's the new thing, the main character's a girl. That's basically it. Um, <clears throat> I thought the special effects were pretty okay, and I love the cat Goose, oh my gosh. It's so true, Goose, that cat really does steal the show, which is kind of sad, because you would expect Captain Marvel to steal the show. <laughs> the cat does instead and I really liked um, the de-aging effects on Nick Fury and on Agent something that I will not say that's kind of a spoiler you know I'll just get into spoilers uh, yeah, there's a young Agent Coulson which is pretty cool um, what else was there oh so who's that I don't remember that actor's name but basically the actor from uh, the bad guy from Rogue One and Ready Player One and he's pretty much just always a bad guy. It seems like he's going to be a bad guy in this movie. And I really like that it kind of flips and he's actually a, a good guy. So I really liked that twist. Because finally the actor gets to be a good guy who's not just a total sleazy trash can. <laughs> so good on him. Congratulations. It's like, I don't know what it is. Um, you know, when movies keep using the same person for like something. Like, uh, who was it? Uh, Forrest Whitaker. Disney just keeps killing him. <laughs> Disney keeps killing Forrest Whitaker, man. Like, um, he was in a, in Rogue One, he dies like halfway through, and in Black Panther, he dies like halfway through. Like, Disney, stop killing Forrest Whitaker, please. And, uh, fi so finally Disney was like, you know what, maybe we don't want to use him as a bad guy. This dude, I totally forgot the actor's name. If you know it, just please remind me. Um, anyways. Yeah, so it was pretty cool. Uh, the scrolls actually turn out to be the good guys. Uh, well, not really the good guys, more like the victims. Um, so basically, the premise is that the uh, the Kree or these race of warrior heroes, and um, they're supposed to they're the, the scrolls are these evil terrorists that are destroying their homes and killing their families and stuff. Well, basically, it turns out that. Um, the scrolls were actually uh, victims because they had already pretty much lost a war and they were just trying to survive and they're refugees and um, the Kree are just trying to decimate them. They're just like finding them and destroying them. Um, so the Kree are actually pretty much like like evil warlords essentially. Did I say essentially? Essentially. And uh, anyways, what else? Oh, so Captain Marvel um, slash Carol Danvers it's kind of like she was a human, and then she got infused with some Kree blood, and, uh... Yeah, there's not really that much interesting about Captain Marvel, which is kind of sad. Um, like, she can shoot fire, or they call it fire, but she shoots, like, whatever, pro what, photon blast? She shoots photon blasts out of her hands. But her character didn't really have a lot of interesting, um like, points at all. There was nothing really that stood out about her character. It was like watching Thor in the first Thor movie. They see, like, one or two kind of funny things, and they're really strong, and then that's it. Like, okay, give us an actual character, you know, that we can really kind of relate to or, or, or root for. Um, that's another thing, too. Um, 
I don't know what's the what the purpose of it is. Uh, maybe there was some like kind of maybe a feminist type agenda. I don't know. Um, I you can't really tell, but basically what I'm trying to get at is Captain Marvel never really struggles in this movie with anyone except for herself. Um, and even then the struggle has ended like very quickly. Um, I kind of hoped that they had given her more of something to physically struggle against, right? Um, because, I don't know, Brie Larson's acting doesn't really show much of the, uh, internal struggle that she's supposed to have. Um, I guess another, another thing, another, uh, critique I have of the movie is, um, so basically with a lot of these origin stories, right, uh, the hero, they... They kind of look at themselves and they find something about out about themselves in a certain way. And they're like, who am I really? You know, they kind of start to struggle with that. Like, who am I? What are these powers for? Where's my place on the earth? And they're supposed to have some time to struggle with that. You know, you're supposed to kind of get a feel for how they're feeling, why they're struggling with it. And then you got a change of scenery, you got a change of people. And then they have their pep talk. And then they, they come out, you know, like, this is who I am. And I'm, a, and I'm an awesome person. And we're going to fight. Well, that happens in Captain Marvel in the span of like two seconds. <laughs> no change of scene or anything. There's a part she literally goes, I don't even know who I am. And then her friend just immediately is like, I know who you are. You're Carol Danvers and this, this, and this, and you're awesome. She's like, yeah, I'm awesome. That was like so fast. That was like way too fast. I, I felt like, you know, she needed more time to contemplate and build. And I thought maybe it would have been better if she had maybe been like, I don't even know who I am. And oh, because basically she, she, spoiler alert. Uh, the whole thing is a spoiler already. She basically starts to feel that way because she finds out that um, she was, you know, she sees all of her history from when she was a child and when she was a pilot and all that stuff. And uh, she's very much like, you know, shook. She's shooketh because all of her memories were lost and they just came flooding back. And she thought that she was this Kree warrior and it turns out she's not. So she's like, what am I? And um, so that kind of sucks. And when you think about it, you understand why. Like, she feels that way. But when you're watching the movie, it's like, give us some time so she can really connect with that human side of herself. And we never really get that because all she she realizes, you know, her friend helps her realize that she's awesome. And that's it. She's just back to Captain Marvel again. And again, no real change. Because you would, you would think that somebody who didn't know who they were for the last however many years old Carol Danvers is supposed to be, when they get all their memories back, they would be more like a different, like their original self, right? But no, she's still the same person, so there's not really much of a character change either. Um, and uh, let's see, was, there was, was one other thing. Oh, yeah, the villain uh, turns out to be kind of like her mentor, uh, played by Jude Law, and... He's not that good of a villain, you know, um, mostly because he's already weaker than her at the beginning of the movie. Like I said, um, kind of what I was getting into, is she has no real struggle in the movie as far as, like, physically. She, like, um, she's already strong enough to beat everyone that comes her way. And then her, her whole thing is, like, oh, learn to control your emotions. Uh, learn to fight without the, using your, your fire powers. But in the end, she just learns to fight with them, and she gets even stronger. And it's, like... It's kind of comical, but they didn't go far enough um, with the comedy, which is that she's too strong and she doesn't know how to control it. And, like, she sends herself flying sometimes. And it's pretty funny, but they don't really go all in on that, which I wish they should, they would have because at least that would have been something funnier. Excuse me. What was I saying? Oh, basically she gets her powers because uh, Marvell, who was this Cree scientist, was trying to uh, find out the secrets to uh, light speed travel, which would help the scrolls escape from the Cree. And basically, the thing that was powering her lightspeed engine was the Tesseract, which is the blue gemstone, the, spa the space stone, right? And so she, that's where she gets her powers from because it, like, blew up. The, the engine blew up and she absorbed the powers. Now, what I thought would have been really interesting, um, this is, like, a complete change to actually make her have a struggle, finally actually struggle against an opponent um, because she just beats everyone easily, super easily. Maybe that's the feminist agenda. It doesn't really seem that way. Like, it just it just happens. She just beats everyone. And, um... Are you, are you taking notes, Elaine? No. Just kidding. So, what I was hoping would happen was if Jude Law's character... So, he's basically this Kree warrior, right? Who's giving up his whole life for the Kree and Kree this, Kree that. And he pretty much does... He lives in a crappy little apartment, you know, by himself and everything. So... I thought it'd be really cool if he got, like, a hold of the Tesseract, and he looked at it, and he was just like, this power is mine. Like, 
you know, really got consumed by power. Like if he just thought to himself, like I've given him my life for the Cree and the super intelligence and I've got nothing in return. It's about time that I show them how strong I really can be. You know, like he gets all this power and then he fights Captain Marvel and then she stops him because then she could actually fight someone on her level. In this movie, no one is on her level at all. And it's very apparent throughout the whole thing. It would be really cool if she actually had to fight somebody at least as strong as her so that she can, not just like pew pew, but actually use more like wit and strength. You know, not not just strength, but also her mind too, right? Because that's always really important. Is when a hero is also smart. So it'd been really cool, I think, if they had done that kind of, um, you know, maybe build more on a little bit of uh, Jude Law's character. See, I don't even remember his name, but anyways, uh, Jude Law's. Um, you know, maybe he's getting a little bit more and more. Uh, bitter with the the way he's being told what to do and stuff and he's kind of getting tired of being like the, the best soldier ever so he just wants to do something for himself for once and he gets consumed by the power and then captain marvel has to stop him and then they all live happily ever after i think that would have been really cool um yeah i think that would just been really been a much cooler you know more uh a villain that you could kind of relate to right i mean we all there's been so many villains like that already that's like oh my own government like treats him like trash i'm gonna turn against them but it would be really cool because now you have a villain who's actually like super powerful and stuff that would, be, that would have been nice an actual uh you know opponent a worthy opponent as i guess you could say that would have been a little bit better um and a couple of things uh you know oh, whatever that's kind of pointless but basically just the the um the origin of the name the avenger initiative i thought was kind of dumb um you could just watch the movie but you'll see what i mean you some people thought it was cool i thought it was dumb whatever you can think whatever you want um, okay, so now for the politics portion of the bedtime politics. This movie was not the feminist uh, propaganda machine that people thought it was going to be. It was actually more of like, um, and again, um, if you're not into politics, this really doesn't even apply. But if you really are into politics and stuff like that, it kind of has this, uh, pro I guess you could say progressive or liberal agenda of, um, you know, basically the, the big bad uh, superpower is just hurting all the little people and you know uh the refugees are all good basically right because it's kind of funny because that's kind of how they portray the scrolls they're all just refugees they use the words very specifically the scrolls are all refugees and all of them are good guys none of them are evil basically they all do everyone does something bad right because you're in a war you do bad things they kind of they kind of touch on that um, but all the refugees are good. None of them are bad. I thought it would have been really interesting if you had a scroll in there who was actually kind of a bad guy um, to set up maybe a Captain Marvel 2. I don't know. Um, but anyways, uh, so you could see that they kind of had... That was actually more of the thing. But at the same time, if you're not really that into politics, that's just any... that Any movie can have that message, really. Like, it doesn't matter. Movies have messages like that all the time. It's just a movie. It's just a story. So, uh you know, if, if you weren't sure if you wanted to watch it until you're going to watch until you see this, you should just watch it. Just try to try to get out of the mindset of, of the politics and stuff. Just watch it for what it is. It's a pretty solid movie. It's not going to blow your mind or anything. And again, for the stuff I said, it's not really too special. It's not really up there for a Marvel movie, uh, but it was pretty cool. You know, I still enjoyed it when, when I really thought about it, I, I, there's more things that I enjoyed than I didn't like. Um, and I know my critiques were long and stuff, but it's because I just feel, that's how I just really feel about things. I don't know, maybe I have kind of, maybe I have the mind of a director where I'm like, maybe they should have gone this way. And I don't know, some people agree with me. If you don't, that's fine. You could tell me how you think it should have gone or if you thought it was perfect, whatever. Um, I guess that's all I had to say about the matter. Uh, yeah, good night. Peace!